Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'd like to take a few moments to introduce you to The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. And today we're going to be emulating his style. Um, and if you've seen a few episodes of The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross, you know um, that you're going to want to try this wonderful technique and paint some beautiful landscapes with just a few strokes of the of the old two-inch brush, as he called it. But can it really be just as easy as Bob makes it seem? Bob Ross uses only a handful of tools and colors on his television show, and in this tutorial we will do the same. It does not take a lot of brushes to achieve the subtle and beautiful technique that Bob does in his landscapes. In fact, even watching a few episodes of Bob Painting will help you understand the basic techniques. Remember, this is your world, as Bob used to say, so paint what makes you happy. We're going to begin, first of all, by setting up our canvas. And we're going to go up to the canvas layer, and I'll show you the size that we're working on here. It's a 17 by 7, 1,775 by 2550 pixels, and it's set to 150 ppi. And that way, when we save it as a JPEG, if you do want to print out on Canvas, for example, you should be able to achieve a, a really nice uh, print. So let's go ahead and begin with um, our tutorial. And we're going to start off by working and creating the sky. And in this uh, Mystic Mountain set of brushes, we have a beautiful grouping of brushes to, to work from. Um, you're going to find that you'll probably have a little crossover on certain brushes that you might like using for something different than what I'm showing you, and that's perfectly fine. Remember, it's your painting, and you can go where you want to go with it. So we're going to begin with a brush called the 2-inch landscape brush. In this tutorial, I'm also using the Mystic Mountain color set, which will be available to you as well. We're going to start off by choosing the color Thalo Blue. And I always like putting a little bit of that Thalo Blue on my color palette in case I need to darken it or lighten it at any certain point or to use it in other parts of my painting. So the mixer pad is available on your color set and you can open that up and use it as you're working along. So with this brush set to default settings, I'm going to begin by working in a rather crisscross motion across the canvas And you'll notice that I'm working directly on the canvas layer at this point. And these are just kind of crisscross brush strokes. But as I'm doing this, I'm starting to evaluate where I want my clouds. And I'm going to be leaving little white spaces at that point, little white areas where I think I might be building some cloud shapes. Once I've done that, I'm going to move down to the lower part of the canvas, and this is where we're going to be placing our water. And I'm going to actually pull from the, the left edge inward, and then from the right edge inward, but I'm being careful to leave a little bit of a white area in the center here. And this will be that area of light where uh, the clouds are reflect, reflecting onto the water. Now we're going to change brushes now and move over to a brush called the 2-inch blender. And I will set that to default. And I may even go a little bit bigger on this brush now. And that's up to you, uh, depending upon um, what feels right to you. And we're just going to start to blend in kind of circular motions and crisscross motions and we're just going over 
over those brush strokes, but we're leaving the white areas as they are. Okay, that's important. because Those are going to be where our clouds are going to live. Now as I get down to the horizon, you can see this goes pretty quickly. And um, it's also important to mention that these first steps are the first steps to the painting. And this should go pretty quickly for you. And at the final stages where you're putting in your details is where you'll probably spend most of the time on your painting. Now from the edges here, I'm going to pull the edges from the left to center and then right to center and then with big broad strokes I'm just going to go right back and forth here and blend out and soften that area and you can see where that leaves that lovely um, light area from the the clouds where the clouds are going to be. And you should end up with something that looks similar to this. Now I'm going to actually pull in my horizon line here and I'm going to show you the brush I'm going to use for that and it's called the pinch cloud. We're going to select the V or V as in Victor on your keyboard and right about where the horizon is going to be I'm going to actually pull this out and pull it straight across and then let it go and it's just going to create a nice soft little horizon and I'm going to pull that one more time and you can see that that creates a nice little horizon line and it gives us an idea of where we're going to place things in our composition. We're going to go on now and develop our clouds and we're going to use a brush called the Soft Cloud Detail Brush and we're going to um, begin and this brush is wonderful because it really just kind of creates clouds on its own and we're just going to start off by and let's make sure we get back to our B key here and you'll notice I'm just going to start at the top of where I wanted my cloud shapes to be and just I'm just rather going in circular kind of circular motions and letting these kind of take form pull one in over here and down in the lower area here anywhere where you want to put clouds and remember this is like Bob said your world so you put clouds where you think they should be now we're going to soften those a bit by using the soft cloud blender brush this is a nice brush because we can uh, set uh, let's go back to the soft cloud blender we can it this brush has a reset setting which means the amount of paint on the brush at any given time so resaturation on the brush at 0% means that brush is going to do what? It's going to blend. So what I'm doing now is I'm just softly going over the bottom parts, just the bottoms, and softening the edges on that cloud, on those clouds. It's um, once you have those just kind of softened up a little bit, I will go back to a brush called the two inch blender. And again, this is a blending brush, 
and I'm going to in nice sweeping motions in an upward fashion I'm just going to sweep up those clouds to give them a little more shape a little more form but I'm being very careful to stay at the bottom of the clouds I want to keep that nice detail going on on the upper parts of the cloud now I absolutely love painting clouds so this is an area that when I start to finish the painting and want to go into more detail then this is an area that I'll want to go back into and probably add a, you know a bit more detail maybe a few more overlays of clouds to show a little more depth um, important keeping your values a little darker at the top and then as you come down to the horizon line the colors will be a little softer so you can afford to do a little more blending a little more muted appearance down towards the bottom and always dragging a nice sweeping motion upward with those with the with the uh, two inch blender we're going to begin next with our mountains and we're going to pick up a brush at the very top of this brush category called the five inch painting knife and this brush is one of the new brushes in painter in the thick paint media category and uh, we're going to begin by choosing simply paint and you'll want to open your thick paint media panel by simply selecting the brush and then selecting the show or hide thick paint media and we're going to change that to paint and then we're going to be using a mountain mixture of color and um, mountain mixture is actually located on the color palette here again it's another color that I like to put down uh, on my color palette because I like to tone it a little bit um, and oftentimes I'll add actually uh, a few different colors to it maybe a little blue that's the thalo blue just until I get the color I'm looking for and that's about right I don't want anything too dark because these mountains are going to be in the background at this, po this point when we start to paint with this brush it's going to actually add a thick paint layer and um, we can always drop that layer or convert it to a default layer at any point as well so let's begin by uh, painting in our mountain and we're just going to make a couple of quick little strokes one going down and the other one going down and then we'll decide at this point if we want to put another little mountain maybe back here and I'm just stroking this in now if I want to remove any of this paint I can simply go to the thick paint panel and actually erase out some of that paint as well so if I want a little softer line or I want to maybe reshape the mountain a little bit now we're go going to go back to the paint option here and I'm going to actually just softly pull in a little bit of color on one side of the mountain till I have something about like that and that's about what I want to do here and then uh, we're going to now change the type to paint uh, with grain and we're going to choose a paper texture and the texture we're going to be choosing here is called the window frost and we're going to use a titanium white from our mystic mountain color palette and what I'm going to do now is very very softly float in a nice little texture cover here and I'm using very soft pressure 
to just paint in the slopes of these mountains and then to add just a little bit of that textural effect. I'm also going to choose both of these layers here by holding down the shift key and then command E. We're going to collapse those layers and we will commit them. And then when I start to paint again, we're going to it's going to add another thick paint layer and that's exactly what I want. And I'm going to actually pull in a little more texture. Here I might pick up some of my And again, uh, I might mention here that if you love painting mountains, you'll want to go back into your mountains when you start your details and finish up with some added detail. But right now, all we need to do and all we need to worry about is getting in just the basics. This is a nice soft Magnes blue uh, with a with some white mixed in with it that works nicely for your little shadows on the mountains. And then I think I want a little more white on this side of the mountain emphasizing the snow. So I'm just going to um, pick my titanium white and then just pull down both sides there just a little more paint. Okay, so we end up with something like this. I can go with a smaller brush here and just do a little painting at the top here. Getting some nice colors in here. And again, a lot of this detail I would do probably towards the end of the painting as I want to go back in and detail my painting out. We're going to uh, pick up another brush here called Mountain Mists. And we're doing, going to basically tap this around the base of the mountain. And then we're going to gently lift upward to create that illusion of mists. We'll start off with titanium white and begin. I'm going to add a new layer and work on a new layer. And I'm just going to uh, begin with the reset set to 100%. And I'm going to start off at the top here and just in circular motions begin pulling the, that, those cloud shapes through the mountain here and around the mountain, almost as if it's just hugging the mountain. We'll bring our opacity up on that as well. And we'll let that those mists come right down and around and almost blend into the clouds in the background. Once we've done that, we'll take that brush right down to 0% and that mountain mist now becomes a blender brush. And again, we can just soften just a bit. We'll now go back to the, the two inch blender and we're going to drop all our layers. So we're going to go to layers, drop all, and again we're going to lift. First of all we're going to pull these mountain edges down so we have these nice soft distant edges now. 
and then we're just going to in circular motions just blend out the bottom of these lower mists here nice big brush and we have that nice feeling of mist down at the bottom of the mountains we can soften these mountains just a bit which will in turn push them back in the distance a little bit and then later in our painting we can go back and do some additional detail work on them We're going to uh, next work with a brush called the Foliage and Trees brush. And we're going to be holding this brush in kind of a vertical path. And we're going to be tapping down to create small trees at the base of the mountain. We're going to be using vertical strokes to reflect the color in the water as well. And I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to lightly brush across them and cut water lines through creating that that look of water at the base so we'll want to emphasize that area as well now the color we're going to want to be using here is a combination of the mountain mixture and what I've done is added a little more phthalo blue to that so um, it it creates a nice uh, starting color um, and again, what I like to do is go ahead and put that on my palette so I have that color to work with, but I can also work with it in different values as well. If I need to tone it down a little bit, I can add some white or gray to it, uh, or a little black if I want to deepen the values. Now we're going to start um, with our back row. So we're going to begin on a new layer and we're going to begin by painting in and you'll have to evaluate the value of this notice that this is just a vertical stroke going down and it's going to come a little bit higher than the top of the mountain if you need to go a little darker um, watch your opacity on this brush you can bring the opacity up and it's just a quick vertical stroke down and we'll want to make sure that these uh, that these trees basically are about the same height but it's okay to have one or two um, that that aren't and we're just going to take that right down kind of following this line of light here and maybe finish that tree line right about there And I'm going to then take my two inch blender and I'm just going to very, very softly pull down just to soften the edges of that and to push those trees back in the distance a little bit. I'm picking up that color now, but I'm going to go to my color set and go a little bit deeper in value, more towards the mid-tone here. We're going to go back to the foliage and tree brush, and we're going to bring in another line of trees. And we'll start that line of trees maybe right about here. And I think I want to go a little darker on value. So I'm going to pull that down a little more. So as we come into the foreground, your elements are going to get your trees and other elements are going to be a little darker in value. And again, we're just pulling down with this brush, straight down. And I'm going to take that group A 
right down to the base here. So we'll do that and this time I'm going to deepen that value a little bit further and let's start that group maybe right here. And these are even a little closer to us so we can actually go a little darker with those. Now because these trees are a little closer, I'll take the freedom to maybe start pulling them out. So this brush now I'm going from just going left and right on it just to create the look of trees, just to give a little more tree shape to these foreground trees. Very easy. Now we're going to again take our um, two inch blender and we're just going to in a circular motion pull and just kind of soften the bottom and pull down. I'm actually going to go ahead and drop this now. So you be the judge of when you feel it's important you drop a layer. And we're just going to pull those shadows right down into the mist of the water. So we'll zoom out a little and see how that's coming together. And now we have our basically our middle ground in. We'll soften the edges a little bit and we'll keep our values a little bit deeper towards center. I've added a new layer and we're going to pick up a brush called the Sparkle on the Water. Now this brush you can use uh, either the, um, and let me show you here, you can either use the 2 inch landscape brush for this or you can use the sparkle on the water. And I like the sparkle on the water in terms of the effect that it gives. It's very, very natural. Uh, we'll want to make sure that our opacity is at 100%, our reset is at 100%, and that we're working on a new layer. And I'm going to sample the dark part of the trees and all I'm going to do here is from the horizon I'm just going to begin pulling down in kind of a criss, uh, crisscross, not crisscross, but just right left method here from the horizon and just pull down going back and forth the reflective quality or reflective shadows onto the water. And there is some over here on this side too and they can be a little bit lighter. They don't have to be quite as dark. And you want to try to retain that sparkle or that reflection of the clouds on the water as well. And I'm using a very soft, very soft brush stroke here. And I'm sampling color too as I go through. It just gives the most natural effect. And that looks about right.
Now I'm going to re-examine that horizon line again by choosing the the pinch cloud brush again and using my V key once again I'm going to go ahead and drop this layer and then I'm going to pull that directly across that horizon again just to reestablish that horizon line. Remember to hit your B key again. I'm using a brush now called the script liner number one and I'm going to use that just to paint in a little bit of a uh, landmass coming off from the distance here and you can see it's basically um, kind of a violet shade it has a little violet in it let's actually move that over on the violet side a little bit further and this is one color that actually really helps to create distance and maybe just something like that and I may go a little darker on the dark side here and just pull in very gently uh, just a wee bit of shoreline here and it doesn't have to be very pronounced very simple just so you have a nice read between the sky and the water Now I like to take uh, white and we're going to go back to our color sets and we'll choose the uh, titanium white and I oftentimes will use that just just little touches of light in the background just really help to create some nice distance. This is a really nice foggy, misty look that we have going here. We're going to begin on a new layer and we're going to be painting in our uh, mid-ground trees here, our evergreens. And uh, for that I'm going to be using a, uh, starting off with a very, very dark value. It's kind of a dark green and I'll go ahead and show that to you here. Um, it's going to be very dark and then at, once we get some of the, the uh, shape in we're going to go back with that uh, and go over it and create some highlights on the trees as well. So our little island is going to be somewhere out here and we're going to start by simply dragging down with our brush and we're going to basically create three different trees here. One, two, and one maybe over here. Okay, and then this is very easy to do. Um, we're simply going to start at the top of the first tree and we're going to be going in a, a right-left fashion here and we're just going to be holding firm pressure on this brush, going back and forth and letting it paint our little evergreens. And don't worry about these uh, trees coming together in terms of you know separation because we're going to help with that when we start to add the highlights. And then we'll take this tree and do the same thing. and then finally this tree and again it's just back and forth and just get real loose and creative <laughs> loose and expressive with your brush strokes here at the bottom here I'm letting this kind of pull out just a wee bit because that will help to start to form our little island that these trees are going to be on. Now I'll do a little detail. I'm 
going to uh, go to this color permanent green deep and we're going to start pulling in some different color here on this side of the tree the, the this tree is probably going to be a lot darker in value and also towards the bottom and then as you come towards the top we'll go with a little lighter value but we'll do that once we get our trees in and we're same type of brush stroke and just leaving some of those dark values coming through to help uh, give the trees form and shape and set them up in perspective away from the background we'll go to a sap green now and with sap green we'll go ahead and just pull that onto some of the edges of the tree very tip tops again being careful to leave those dark uh, under growth and you don't need a lot of this just enough again to show dimension and form and I may even go up a little bit brighter and a little lighter just at the top very very softly put in a few little highlights okay now I want a little texture um, on the little island that these trees are going to be on so for that I'm going to go to the window frost brush I'm still working or window frost paper and I'm still working with the foliage and trees however I'm going to choose dab options here and ensure that the uh, apply dab stencil is selected and then um, that way when I paint with this brush and we're going to go ahead and get a nice kind of a let's go back to our color sets and we'll start with a nice burnt sienna here and just pull in a little bit of that burnt sienna across and then I'm going to sample that dark value and just pull that in a little bit some nice dark values at the base I think that's looking pretty good um, for the trees here I want to show a little bit of um, tree trunk coming through so for that we're going to use this color called raw umber and we're just going to gently put that in in a couple of spots and it doesn't have to be heavy just enough to where you see occasionally a tree trunk coming through and then I also like to use that for just pulling out maybe the look of little under trees, undergrowth coming out. Feel free to work with different colors here. We'll keep this back end a little bit on the dark side and then I'm going to uh, select white and just pull that a little bit across the edge here and let's also put the reflections of those trees into the water and again you can use two brushes that would be the um, sparkle on the water which is the one that I really enjoy working with and the two inch landscape blender so our landscape brush so for this uh, we want a nice dark uh, reflection I'm going to go ahead and drop this now and add a new layer and I'm going to start 
putting in my reflections. Remember I said to just go back and forth with these. That's all it takes. Just find the right size for you in terms of, you know, what's working best for you in terms of size of the brush. And then I like to incorporate some other color into this as well. So pick up some of that green and pull it into the water. Pull out the edges a little bit just to continue to give that very natural look. And I'm going to go back to my Foliage and Trees variant, Titanium White, and we're just going to pull out a little white on the edges here just to maybe show a lapping of water against the edges of the, the island. We're going to start next by putting in some another group of foreground evergreens, and we'll do that by adding another layer. We're going to be picking up the foliage uh, and trees brush. And I'm going to make a nice large brush here. And we're going to be, again, working with a darker value. And we're going to place it just about right here, just a bit above the peak of the mountain. And again, you can see in just kind of a right left crisscross motion will start to bring in that tree. And you notice, notice that I am add, added a new layer and I'm completing that on a new layer. These this tree just kind of paints itself, just kind of go back and forth with the brush. And you want to give it some nice firm pressure. If you're not getting the brush stroke I'm getting, um, you know, play with your brush calibration. But it should be, it should render pretty nicely for you here. A little darker at the base, and I'm not taking this too much farther down. Just want to make sure I get to the edges, get a few darker values in here. And you'll notice that the whole painting, we work from the back forward. So this tree is basically in. And towards the back, I'm going to add just another happy little tree poking its head out. Maybe I'll even take this one up a little bit higher. And then also here we'll want to pull in just a few nice little shadows or highlights. And we'll keep that very subtle and just to the tops of the branches. Okay. 
and perhaps maybe a couple of bright highlights, but nothing too strong. Just where the sun might be touching slightly. With Burnt Sienna, we're going to pull in, and I, I, with this Burnt Sienna, I'm actually going to pull some on my palette, color palette, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to that just to tone it down a bit. And then I'll sample that color, and we're going to use it just to pull in a bit of tree trunk. And that doesn't have to be heavy. You want to actually just show a little bit of it. Even if you need to go over it again, you can do that just an indication of a tree trunk coming through should be fine. We're going to drop this layer now and add a new layer once again and we're going to pick up a new brush here. This is a lot of fun. This brush called the Frosted Foliage and we're going to start with our underpainting first. So we want to get a relatively dark color uh, a good color would be the mountain mixture, but add a little bit of um, sap green or permanent green into it so you get a little more green. And we're going to begin on that layer by just simply tapping in. And actually, I think I want a little bit darker on this color. There we go. And we're going to be just tapping in and you'll notice how this brush, uh, this would be similar to what the fan brush would do for Bob. And we're just going to be creating the look of foliage. And we're going to be taking that foliage all the way down to the base here. And just let it get nice and dark. And we'll be doing the same on the other side. And letting that kind of flow in as well. And this is our base for our trees and foliage that's coming next. I'm going to take this permanent green here and start putting a little bit of that in because I want some color variation here. And on my color wheel now I may go a little deeper at the corners. I especially want a darker value. This is going to set up everything else going on in our painting here. I'll have those mountains just peeking through. And some beautiful foliage coming up. And just kissing the edge of our little Island. The next thing we're going to do now is start adding, um, you know, this, this part of it is what I call your happy painting where you want to take this painting where you feel the time of year is. Uh, what you want to say and 
um, you know, since we're getting into the fall now, the color scheme that I would probably use here would be some nice bright fall colors. So I'll begin with a lighter value. And I don't want to lose all my darks. So you can see as I start to work on the trees, I'm going to let those dark values still come through in parts because this helps to create the form of the trees. And I'll start pulling some lighter values along the edge here and over on this side as well. And I'll just start building this tree as well. Lighter values along the edges and then just begin to deepen those values as you work down. Where there is going to be less light, you're going to have darker values Let's go back to our color set here and we'll pick up maybe some nice yellow ochre. Pull that in up at the very tops. And just at the tips. Now you can go a little smaller with this brush if you want to do a little more detail work. And then just continue to sample your colors. Back to our yellow ochre here. And you can develop like different levels of color, form. Let's do a little bit of this. Um, actually, let's pull this nice mixture here and use that to maybe pull in another colored field here. And I use my Alt key quite a bit just to sample color and then get some nice mixtures of color going on. And there's our beautiful foliage. And now let's go ahead and paint in some details uh, using um, the, I think what we're going to do here is use the foliage and tree brush. And we're going to go ahead and select the window frost paper and set that brush to paint with texture. I've added a new layer and uh, we're picking up the foliage and tree brush and we're, we've got it set to paint with uh, window frost texture via the dab options here. And on that new layer, this is very easy to do. All you need to do is decide where that tree is going to be placed, where it's going to live, and just pull up and you get this really nice tree trunk coming up. And we'll do a couple of them here. And we'll maybe even have one coming up here. Something like that. And then over on this side we're going to be doing the same thing. And I think I'll pull that up just a little bit higher and let that just come up. Make that a little thicker at the bottom here. And you'll see that this, with the window frost texture, it gives you um, kind of the appearance of the maybe the aspen tree or something uh, similar to that. Um, 
then I'll pick up a little lighter color and I like to pull in some of my own little branches. And these are just delicately painted in. And we'll do the same over here as we go up to the upper lofts of the tree. And then just where the light may be hitting, I could take this brush up a little bit larger in size and just pull a little highlight here and there on the edge of this aspen. Do the same up here in the top of the tree. And here we'd probably get a little more light than we would down at the bottom. And we're doing the same by just pulling out a little bit of light. This kind of pulls your tree out of the darkness I'll we'll pick up a darker value here and maybe just paint in a little, some little tree trunks and stems coming out just to add a little more interest. And then let's go back and pick up again the frosted foliage brush and we'll go back to our color sets and let's go with a yellow ochre one more time and we'll just pull in a few more colors down here maybe a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna would be nice for color And then why not add some flowers? There's, it's not a Bob Ross painting without flowers. So we're going to choose the Happy Flowers brush. And let's say we just put in some nice bright red flowers. And we just paint those in here and there, very subtly, just to add a little pretty color there. And I'm going to add a little bit of a landmass here, and I'm, the brush I'm going to use for that is going to be the Script Liner Thick, and we're going to make sure we are working with paint with grain. We're going to choose the paint frost col uh, paper texture and I'll go ahead and drop this layer now and then when I begin to paint you can see that it's going to paint in um, with that nice texture and that's what I want. And we're just going to give a little bit of a hint of a little trail here. A little bit of a land mass. Pull some darker color in there too. And then back to the frosted foliage brush and maybe the yellow ochre and we'll just cover little pit little parts of that trail just to give it a little more natural finished look. I think I'll go back to my um, foliage and trees here and maybe paint in a couple of little branches on this side as well. Maybe pull out a few more little aspen trees here as well. They tend to grow in big groups so it's okay. And then finally uh, 
you know, at this point it would be up to you to go in there, have fun, finish up, add, you know, maybe a few more leaves. Let's go over to this distant area here and maybe pick up some of the colors we have and put those right on the the look of little bushes at the bottom here. I could pick up my foliage and tree brush and maybe what's needed is maybe a couple of osprey flying above. And I would probably at this point go back in and maybe define my mountains a little bit further. Clouds also, at this point I would probably pick up my, um, let's go with the soft cloud detail and we'll pull in and let's go ahead and drop all our layers. So we'll go to layers and drop all, add a new layer, and then I can start building with those clouds. We'll make sure that our reset is up to 100%. And now I can kind of get in there and add a little more depth and dimension to these clouds. This is where you would just take your time to do your final detail work. Always trying to create depth and dimension. Take this down to 0% or you can go to your soft cloud blender and just soften edges. always want to be pushing these areas back into the distance. Maybe mute that one mountain top out a little bit. Every one of these that I paint turns out a little different and I learn more and more each time that I paint, paint the subject. So I think I, I, you know, I'm sure that you'll have a very similar experience as you go forward. They're absolutely fun to paint. I haven't had this much fun simply just painting in a long time. I remember years ago when I did do some of the Bob Ross painting tutorials with oils. You know, this is where I really learned to learned how the paint felt, learned how it should render. So I think that there is a real value in learning to paint this scene, doing it several times. Uh, every time it's going to be different. You may want to try doing it on a landscape orientation instead of a portrait orientation. You know, I, I enjoy going back into these and taking, you know, it may take me 30 minutes just to get the basics in, but I spend, uh, you know, another hour going back through it and developing the detail. So, so thank you for joining me and I really wish you happy painting and enjoy the process. Just have fun with it and enjoy the brushes. Okay, take care.